No. What up, Yo, man? What up, Scoops? what up? What up? Dude, not much, man. How we doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm warmer now than I was last week, which is dude. Nice. That's what's up. Warm is always good. I hate Warm. that cold weather. It sucks. Yeah, dude, cold weather sucks. It's the um, worst. You're. And we'll get into like a little bit of an intro, but you're in Kansas City, right? Yes, sir. Kansas City. Now, if anybody's watched the previous um, podcast, I'm not good at geography. Where is Kansas City? It's right on the border of uh, Kansas and Missouri. Okay. So, so north, north of Texas, of like just yes, directly north shot, of Texas. like straight shot. Pretty much, man. Okay. okay. Pretty much. Um, how yeah. cold is it? What's the weather like right there? Weather today is pretty nice. It's like 50 some degrees outside. Okay. Uh, hood, went outside hoodie and shorts. So okay. that's always the move. It's actually 63 right now. Yeah, it's 70, oh, 71 is what we got here. Well, you just got me deep. Up. So it's you nice, not deep. a cloud in the sky. It's a fantastic day. That's what's up, man. So let's get into <laughs> Noob. Who is Noob outside of content creating? Noob outside of content uh, creating, I, well, I'm an operating room nurse. I do like op nursing contracts. So I've been lately I've been sticking to Kansas City, but before that I was traveling all across the country, just like uh, picking up assignments here or there. Um, before I started this, I had never been west of Tennessee. I'm originally from West Virginia. Okay. And my first actual assignment was in Reno, Nevada. So I've That's been pretty far around. west. Yeah, yeah, it's very far west. And if you've never driven <clears throat> across the country, I highly recommend it. Uh, the first time is amazing, but every time after that kind of sucks more and more. We drove, but, was it 21, maybe early 22? We drove to from Texas to Detroit and then back. Dude, that sounds miserable. Well, I, dude, let me I rephrase actually think that. I remember you talking about that. Momo drove from Texas to Detroit. She's going to say <laughs> something if I don't insert this. And she was mad at me for something. So she drove by herself, and I felt like a complete a-hole. Um, <laughs> so I bought a plane ticket, and I landed like no. midnight um, to get there. And then I drove majority of the way back. Uh, it was pretty evenly split, 14 hours to Valdosta, Georgia, to go hang out with one of my boys. Um, catch some That's sleep and then straight down I-10 from basically from Tallahassee to Texas. Dude, those are long, long days. Yeah. Did you make it one, one, uh, um, one drive? One we day? did. Um, so, well, we stopped in Valdosta, slept for maybe four or five hours, and okay. just kind of woke up and got right back to it. And I think we got back to Austin at 3 a.m. Maybe, oh, maybe a little bit later than that. Did you power through and just stay through the stay up through the night? I did. Well, I went to sleep when I got home, but okay. Um, I had that no choice to power. I have family in Houston, so we could have stopped three hours earlier, I guess. But no, once I once I saw Houston, I'm like, no, I got yeah, this. Dude, once you can no smell in... the like Gulf Coast, I'm like, oh, I'm close enough. Going absolutely, hundred percent agree with you there, man. So, but that's... what no, is? That's... Go sorry. ahead. Sorry, I it's... cut you off. But that's basically what I do for a living. And just outside of that, I really like to lift weights. Uh, during the pandemic, it was kind of like, kind of didn't happen. Didn't go to the gym a lot just because of the pandemic and everything like that. And now I'm trying to get back into it a little bit more. So what does is, what is an operating room nurse do? Okay. So uh, we basically set the room up. We bring the patient back to surgery. And each place is a little bit different that i mean every hospital they're the way they run procedures is a little bit different but you're basically in charge of positioning the patient you're you're in charge of like opening if you need some more supplies during surgery you you go get them you give them to the sterile field you prep the patient and you're basically just in charge of like making sure your room runs accordingly if you have like three or four different surgeries so you have to like plan ahead make sure you have things on time and just you, your goal is to not have the patient be in the room more than they need to be. Gotcha. Basically. So you are kind of the brains behind the operation. You're the moving parts in the operating room. If... Yeah, I get the moving parts going, I would say. I'm okay. not the moving parts myself, but I help facilitate that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. That's got to be stressful, especially with certain surgeries, I would imagine. Is it's it any surgeries sometimes. that you're doing or like... Do you have like a specialty field that you kind of stay within? 
I uh, don't really have a specialty field, um, and um, there's only things that I, several things that I don't do, and that is um, vascular stuff and hearts. Don't do hearts. Uh, don't do a lot of transplants either, but one, a place in South Carolina had me start to learn transplants when I was there. Okay. So that was interesting, and it is stressful at times, but the more I've been d doing it, the more confident I am, and the better, the more I like it. Like, the, I used to not like it so much, but nowadays, like, this past year has been great, and it's... Uh, I'm starting to actually enjoy my job, which is something I never thought I'd say. Gotcha. So when I had, I tore my ACL in 2016, had oh, surgery man. early 2017. Um, when, so you would have been one of the people. So when I went in, I was freaking out and they had to give me value. Oh, really? And I believe it okay. was the operating room nurse that gave me the volume to calm my ass down before they took me back. Okay. No, it was probably the CRNA. It's probably maybe um, the person below the anesthesiologist. Okay. Well, yeah, they gave me something, and I uh, was cool. There we they go. Chopped my fucking leg off at that point. <laughs> yeah. Um, they give you that medicine, makes you don't care. Yeah, and that's what they needed to do because I yeah. I made the mistake of asking them what so what does like the procedure look like like what are y'all actually gonna do and he's like oh we're gonna drill a hole here and we're gonna go straight through your shin bone and we're gonna wiggle this little rope in there. And I'm like, don't, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I feel so, you, man. Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Yeah, I should have just kept it that way. Um, what's the uh, number one surgery that you'd say, like, that you enjoy doing the most? I would say, like, robotics. Okay. Just any, you can, you can do several different things robotically. They do a lot of um, robotic hysterectomies where I go now. A lot of robotic appendectomies robotic gallbladders like cholecystectomy is the long word but basically you're taking a gallbladder out of someone gotcha. and that's probably what i enjoy the most also repairing hernias is is a good thing like it's not a bad not a bad gig that's, that's pretty cool the robotic that's aspect cool. of it is is very interesting because it really is you you were talking you were telling me a little bit about it but i guess there's like a a station like a almost like a cockpit that yeah. they just kind of... I'm sure it's not big joysticks like you would see. It, I mean, it's but... kind of like that. It really is. I can. I might be able to take a picture of one. That's cool. Yeah, if you could if do that, that you. would be awesome. Yeah. I um, obviously can't take one like during surgery, but I can probably take one. Like, yeah, please please don't like with no one. selfie with someone taking surgery. Or no, anything. no, I like, can't do that. <laughs> we don't want that. Um, but yeah, that would be really cool. So I, I, I imagine in my head, it's like the Iron Man suit that they're just like, and then they're just now that would be sick. Uh, I'm sure like 20 years from now, that's going to happen. Just laser, like actual laser beams, just cutting people open. Yeah. That, that'd be that crazy. Would, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, you're streaming on YouTube. You're just creating content on YouTube. What are you doing? Right now, I'm making videos, just creating content on YouTube. I wish I had, I just wish I had more time. I, if I had more time, I would love to get back into the streaming streaming game. I, It's so weird because I, I love streaming. And the thing right under your Twitch handle where it says, like, when you were last live, mm -hmm. for me, it says five months. And I'm just like, man, I, it doesn't feel like five months, but yeah. I've just been so busy. Like, and... I would love to stream every day or like three t three times a week, but I really just I don't think that's valuable for me right now, just because I only I probably only have like ten hours a week to de devote to any sort of content creation whatsoever, and I just think Twitch is one of those platforms where you have to be consistent at it, and I just don't have that option right now. Plus, with YouTube, I can edit whenever like 30 minutes here and there doesn't have to be like a four hour straight situation like a stream or something like that if yeah. that makes any sense that makes sense because my next question was well if you have time to do all these videos and do all the editing why don't you just sit down and stream right um, but when you take into account and you'll if you do come back from streaming you'll notice this as well is that like the, everyone's gone like where yeah. where is everybody and right. it's almost like starting over like, I, I still had, when I came back, I still had my few 
OGs that were in my chat, they, they kind of popped in. And more people are starting to come back now because I'm a little bit more consistent. That's what's um, up. Love to hear it. But, yeah, now I'm trying to tackle the YouTube game. Um, this podcast being the first series that we're doing on YouTube. And we're going to follow it up with... I thought it would be funny to do, like, debuts for cards that people got six months ago. That, um, hey, dude, that, do it. I like, think it'll be a sick series. I'm, it'll be the I'm the last to debut this card. <laughs> dude, that's hilarious. Um, I, I really like that idea. So I, I thought about doing something like that and then the best God Squad that I could possibly get after taking six months off the game, which is why dude, I'm grinding out idea. all those stuff. So we're going to put those up, and then 23, of course, we're going to hopefully just throw out content all over the place. Just dude, like short, like 10-minute videos stuff like that so hell yeah that sounds like a great plan man so hopefully hopefully we get some content out there uh, but this podcast was the start of it so i can kind of learn how to edit because i'm doing it all myself because i'm too poor to pay somebody so dude, doing I all the that, editing man. all the thumbnails everything dude there's something to say about like gaining those skills for yourself as well yeah because then if you ever get to that point where you do want to hire someone you're going to be able to communicate with them better about like what you want to see in the exactly. finished product yeah so i'm learning some things learning some tricks um tango has been a huge help there because he's Dude, been Tango's really really, really taken off with tiktok and everything he's so been he's been some inspiration it, for sure hell yeah he's been killing it it's it's really good to see my friends just continue to to soar in this game for sure and it, he was mentioning i didn't really put one and one together but during covid none of us were really working i mean i was still working normal but i was still coming home and stream for six hours um Built different everybody was just like we were kind of all in each other's chats and we're raiding each other and we're all playing together we're playing call of duty or whatever and then now everybody's just kind of gone their separate ways. some people aren't streaming anymore some people are only doing youtube some people went from twitch to youtube as far as streaming um yeah man so it's, it's cool uh, seeing like the different path that everybody's taking and then being able to talk to them about it and kind of say, hey, why did you go that way? What do you think about it? What are your experiences? So it's absolutely, cool. It's man. cool having conversations It's really like this. cool to see, especially when you see someone who started out in the MLB, the show community, and then they go venture off doing some something completely different and just finding so much success. Exactly. And that is so good to see. Exactly. So good to see um where does the show noob name come from dude it's such a it's such a lame uh I, I did not plan it out whatsoever i was just like i'm so impatient when i'm creating profiles and stuff so i had had a youtube channel before i made my uh my twitch i think and i was just like I, I want to be someone relatable. Like, I know I'm not a goon or I know I'm not cracked at the game or anything. I want to be like relatable to everyone. So I was just like, I play the show. So the show and then noob, because I've never played Diamond Dynasty before. And so 20 was my first year playing Diamond Dynasty. So that's where the show noob came from. And then I got people in my chat, like, I don't know, six months, nine months down the road being like, why are you, are you named show noob? Like you're pretty, you're pretty good at the game. I mean, I'm not amazing, but I'm world series player. When I like actually put my mind and effort into it, they're like, you, you're not a noob. And I'm just like, I know. Well, I, I still say I am because I'm, I'm not, I'm still not amazing at the game, but I'm okay. So that's where that came from. And I, I didn't plan ahead of time, obviously. And I was just like, I try to make it, profile as fast as possible because i just didn't have the patience for it oh can't hear you uh i think you're oh, right sorry there we go oh you're good muted. man i do that sometimes um it happens, man. I, I i like the name because i think it's funny now that you're you're probably better than you were when you started playing the game um and you're still for the sure noob like oh yeah i mean most I think most people from the COVID days, I guess is the best way to put it, just call you noob. Yeah. And it's I, just I, kind of funny. It's like funny because it. I think I think there's some people that don't like calling me noob because they think it's like a it's derogatory yeah. towards me or not. I'm just like, nah, man, it's it's cool. Like it, being a noob is not a bad thing whatsoever. Like being a noob means you're trying something new. Yeah. In, in Branching the sense. out. Like 
you're you're brand new at this branching you're out. new doesn't mean if now it can be bad if you throw some stank on it yeah just like <laughs> well anything anything can yeah. be bad if you throw stank on it that's true that's very very true so the, how long have you been on youtube how long have you been throwing content up on youtube just a, a couple years i would say the past couple months is the first couple months where i've really started to be consistent and putting like you know a full video out every week or maybe even two some weeks and let me tell you something it's a it's a lot of work it's a it lot is. of work that's like i can't devote to it and the kind of content that i'm putting out now i definitely can't give to an editor really because they'll shoot me um a couple of my videos are like basically an, an hour long yep. and when i'm editing i'm going through like five hours of footage because I can't make a damn decision when I'm playing the game. Yeah. So it's it's just that. a lot. It's a lot. But I I still like doing um, gameplay videos too. Um, I started off doing franchise, and it's going back and looking at my first couple videos. It's hilarious because I don't have a webcam. I use. Have you heard of Share Factory? It sounds familiar. Is it inside of like PlayStation? Like it's like an yes. app on the PlayStation? Yes. Yes. It's an editing app on the PlayStation. I used that to make all my edits. I used that to make my thumbnails. And it let me tell you, it's, it, it looks rough. Sounds and terrible. It's terrible. And <laughs> you can only make so many cuts with Share Factory. I think you're limited to 50 a video. So I'd be editing a video sometimes and I'd get like halfway through and it'd be like, oh, you've reached the maximum amount of cuts you can make to this footage. And I'm just like, oh my God, what do I keep? What yeah. do I edit out? It's uh, It was miserable. Huh. And are you using different software now, I hope? Yes, thank God. Um, using DaVinci Resolve right now, the free da version of it. It's been da pretty DaVinci Resolve is awesome. That's what I edit everything in. I gotta like sit down with Tango because he's got like these effects that he's using and like changing the lighting, and I don't know if it's like the paid version of it or not. Um, so I don't know is... either. I I haven't even tried to do that yet. Like it just looks intimidating. I'm sure once you get the hang of it, it's probably easier to manage. But he's gotten really good at it. Yeah, no, he's fantastic at it. Um, so anybody watching, if y'all haven't checked it out, um, link is on the screen or little pictures on the screen link is in the bio go check out tango he's got really good oh, edits. Yeah. um i just found out yesterday how to put youtube or my tiktoks onto youtube shorts oh and someone showed me a way to do it without the watermark on it so i think i'll try that but if they're already uploaded to tiktok you can't so i'm just basically downloading oh, the video to my I phone see what and you're uploading saying. it to youtube okay so, i see what you're saying so we're going to throw a whole bunch of stuff on YouTube Shorts, hopefully today. Um, I probably won't flood everything with it because I noticed... I did two yesterday. One of them was I called a 450-foot home run with Griffey. So he, I said he's going to hit a 450-foot yeah. home run, and he hit... It was 452. Um, oh, man. And the other one is my most watched clip on Twitch. And it's me in a dress pulling trout. Dude, I literally just saw that on YouTube the other day. Or I think it was last night I saw it. Yeah, I posted That's amazing. it. amazing. But I posted those at the same time. The Griffey one got 500 views in three hours. The uh, other one got 21 views. So I was like, Dude, okay, maybe if I'm pushing too many videos out, they're like, I need to stagger them a little bit just to keep that the views. That might be good. Coming to, to be honest, I've had uh, videos like that before. I've had shorts kind of do that where it, get, it will get like 21 views after a couple of days or something. I, uh, I delete it and I re-upload it. Yeah, so Tango did that while I think I was on stream. Or it might have been in, in this podcast. It was somewhere. And he goes, hey, you remember that video I deleted and reposted? It had like 50-something views. I was like, yeah. He goes, well, now it's got like 2,000 or 3,000, whatever it was. Hell yeah. And I'm like, in, literally in 30 minutes. And it's I'm crazy. Like, Holy shit. So Dude, there's something crazy. to the algorithm where... If, if the timing's not right when you post your video, it just doesn't yep. get right. So weekends, I found, are the best. So like Friday, weekends Saturday okay. nights. Um, and then any time in the morning on TikTok, I feel like I get a boost, a little bit of a boost. Because That's people have all day to kind of watch it on their lunch break. or 
whenever that's people true. are using their phone. So I didn't think about that. So that's, so I don't know, I'm good. still learning. I'm new. Don't listen to, don't take everything I say with a grain of salt because I don't know what I'm talking about. No, hey man, your anecdotal experience is important to hear for a lot of people exactly. out there. It, it might help somebody. So yeah, absolutely. We ever, what's it look like? What What has to happen for you to start streaming on Twitch again? On Twitch, I think it would, I think I would just need a lot of time off. Like my uh, my new contract, it ends March 24th, which is like the day of early access yes. for the new game, which is dope. It looks like the stars are aligning. I don't know if I'm going to get an extension for my assignment, but if I don't, then I will still continue to look for another assignment and maybe take like a couple weeks. And then maybe you might see my name okay. on Twitch again. But honestly, I, I would kind of like to start streaming on YouTube. Yeah. I wouldn't mind it because I think I think YouTube is making a lot of changes. I, I really like their discoverability. Like Twitch has basically zero discoverability. So I haven't tested this out, but when I do go to stream on YouTube, I you can like make the thumbnail for it. Like make a catchy thumbnail. You can pre-schedule it. So if I wanted to do like a franchise rebuild, like next weekend, I can go ahead and throw the thumbnail up, let people know ahead of time, like it's going to happen. And then right beforehand, I could throw a YouTube short up and your little icon is going to be flashing red saying that you're live. And when people see that, they can click oh. on your picture and like see that you're live and go check it out. Kind of like TikTok. So, they have like the little circle around your icon, like yes. links or whatever it does. That's... Yes, Absolutely very interesting so yeah. i thought about going to youtube and then i got kind of talked out of it um by a couple of people that did make the switch and they're just like ah, i didn't really like it or and it's probably just because it's new and it takes a little bit to kind of build up a new because right if Absolutely. you leave twitch and go to youtube not a lot of people are following you like no not a lot <clears throat> the viewers on twitch are loyal to twitch i very like twitch much so. um Twitch holds a special place in my heart. It's kind of where I got started as a content creator. Yeah. So I'll hang Same out here. I'll hang out here, but Twitch is doing some cool new stuff um, as well. So we'll we'll see. They have this Word. guest star thing um, where you can I, basically do what we're doing, but inside of Twitch. That's pretty solid, man. That's so, pretty cool. Pretty cool yeah. to do like podcasts. I think you can have up to like five or six people on there. So and it just. You don't even have to build an overlay like I had to build overlays and, you know, stuff like that. It just kind of all does it itself. That's Something pretty like that. cool. Like, Tango you can do co-op games. Co-op like, games. Yeah, that'd be solid. Stuff like that. So, if we're playing a friendly against each other, they can see our reactions. Because it's one thing to hear somebody's reaction, but yeah, they can actually thing, see us. Yeah, um, and they could see us talking shit to each other, too. Exactly. So Which is great. Can um, I cuss? Sorry you if can, I can't. You can cuss... I try to minimize it because Clue told me definitely. like YouTube is like very strict about it. Okay, um, yeah, I will definitely uh, keep it on the low end. I think what at sure. worst case scenario, I'll just bleep it out in, in production. So, ooh, Starbucks cup. sounds good. Shout out! I to know Momo, they're Momo. my girlfriends. I love them. Hey, they I have I have about a thousand. I probably have that exact same one in my cabinet. Um, fun fact I'm, about Starbucks. So for the longest time, there was a sign like outside of our neighborhood. We live in the middle of nowhere, and it's like, oh, this car wash is coming soon. We drove by it yesterday, and I looked at it, and I was like, that's not a car wash. And it's got, like, the wood, like, it looks really nice, like a wood outside building, a lot of glass. Oh. And then they put up the sign, and it's a circle, and it says drive through underneath it. And I was like, yes. that's a fucking Starbucks. So Momo <laughs> is getting a Starbucks literally four minutes away from our house. That's amazing. Oh, my so, God. We're, uh, you know, I saw Starbucks a line. Junkies. There's, a, like, there's, like, a Taco Bell like that. It's just like driving through a bank. Yeah. Basically. It's, yeah. it's nuts, man. There's some nice Taco Bells out there. The one in Vegas you can actually get married in. What? It's got like a Taco Bell wedding chapel. Oh, my Super goodness. Super cool. If I can find a picture, I'll put it up on the screen. But it, it's pretty cool. Um, I did <laughs> think about amazing, marrying man. Momo at Taco Bell. That would have been hilarious, man. I think it would have been fantastic. And I think, I think they give amazing. you like custom hot sauce packets with like... I do or like your names on them or something as part of the package. That's amazing. Like super cool stuff. That would be amazing. So uh what do you think YouTube why why YouTube over 
over Twitch, um, is it worth the loss in like viewership or having to rebuild viewership? I think, uh, I think it's, it's unknown really. I, okay. I don't know yet. I just like, I think right now it's, it's better for what I want to do. And I, to be honest, I'm really enjoying it right now. I'm really enjoying making videos. I think it's actually like, I think it's making me a better content creator in general. Like I think when I, if, and when I do come back to streaming, I'll be a better streamer for it. Like I'm getting better at talking to no one. Yeah. Whereas, that's a really like, good point. You, um, uh, I mean, when you start out with Twitch, you got it, you got to practice talking to no one anyway, but like, after a certain point, you necessarily don't have to practice talking to no one because there's going to be people there depending on like where you are in your Twitch journey. Yeah. And I think it's always a good thing if you haven't like kept up with that skill because it is a skill. It is a skill in my opinion. And to go back and do it again and like reteach yourself how to do that, I think it's important. I think it'll make you better in the long run. Plus, with YouTube videos, they're not, or YouTube streams for that matter, they're not going to be like lost when you're done with it. Like if, if you, if I stream, you know, like three games going to like on a world series r run, it's going to be up on YouTube forever. And it can like, you can get ad revenue from that forever. Okay. Like, so Twitch they, VODs, they're done after 60 days and yeah, you know, no so, one really watches VODs anyway. That's very interesting that their VODs don't expire like Twitch. Yeah. Um, because there's been some cool things that I've done on, on stream that like, man, I'd, I would like to do like a video just recapping 21. Like, yeah, what, let's see, what did I do on Twitch for 2021? What did I do on Twitch for 22? Um, and it would, it would take forever. That would be a endless edit, but that would be really cool to just go through and like highlight my Twitch journey. Yeah. So clips are forever. Absolutely. So I've been clipping everything now. I have a That's button. True. I just push clips it. Just are clip forever. it clip it that's dope. um and my first it was three years ago that most watched one it's me in a dress makeup like my it's my alter ego her name is tatiana um <laughs> dude that's awesome and she it was a halloween it was my first sub goal i hit like 50 subs or 25 subs or whatever it was dude, that's I told big. people I'll, I'll stream in a dress it just landed on halloween which was really cool that's so cool. So I still got the dress in the closet. Hell yeah. Might break it out. People have asked me if she's coming back. I think Tatiana I should make it come back. I think I think she should. Yeah. So, I mean, let's just jump right into the the meat and bones here. MLB. Oh yeah. Um let's talk let's start with twenty two. Okay. What are your thoughts on MLB twenty two? Um, looking at it like in a vacuum, if we just look at 22, it's not a bad game in its core. But if you look at it while looking at 21, it's just basically a reskin with less stuff or and more okay. stuff that's broken. Basically, like we got many seasons this year. We thought we were going to get cool rewards from it, like kind of reward our offline players. We got maybe like we got that Evan Longoria in the first like season of many seasons. And then mm -hmm. like. It never maybe one or two cool rewards after that, like as far as cards go, and it just they didn't really put much effort into it. I did like co op, although I didn't play it that much. If there are like rewards tied into co op in the future, that'd be great. But also, there's uh, franchise somehow is worse, and I'm a big franchise guy. Okay, and the thing, all right, I'm gonna get real specific here. So I love doing fantasy drafts in franchise. I would my thing used to be letting the computer just draft my team and I would solve the mess. However, when you do fantasy franchises in 22, you know how over the attributes over like the course of a season you'll see a plus or minus over it to see how like a player is progressing. Yeah. Well, that doesn't show up when you do a fantasy draft. Oh. It's like okay. the most important thing to me. Yeah, like is being able to see that, like how a player's doing, and no, I'm, I'm not going to take screenshots of all my players and like line <laughs> them up. Try to reference everything. And... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing that, and it's just like super frustrating. Um, so as far as that goes, it, it took a major step back. Huh. I really, I miss Team Affinity. I loved Team Affinity. That was great. 
like the gameplay itself i know is is very questionable to a lot of people specifically hitting the, yeah specifically hitting and like a lot of people have been talking about pinpoint too like how i we don't really understand if we if we mess up just a hair it misses by a lot yeah so we don't really understand that or at least i don't someone else out there probably does so when you combine those sort of gameplay issues and lack of team affinity um you combine those and look back at 21 where it was we had team affinity and it didn't seem like the gameplay was as bad back then that and yeah. it's a total reskin basically so i think it's quite a step back yeah um you touched on a, a few things so obviously hitting mechanics are shit um they yeah. don't make sense the physics just aren't there things happen in the game yeah. that aren't physically possible um i've never had an issue with pinpoint um i understand if i miss by a little bit it may be pretty far off but i've had times where i didn't even do the pattern and that's true it was still a strike it wasn't where i wanted it to be but it was still a strike yeah sometimes so, i mean you sometimes you throw a dot when you just like draw west virginia in the pinpoint yeah. circle yeah, just, <laughs> um, yeah that's me most of the time i've done like oh this is a, i pick circle change and i just do the fastball motion dude and i've I'm done just, that before and i'm just like oh that was a perfect pitch like wasn't dude, anywhere where i wanted it to be but that was a great fastball dude word and why are the best pitches the easiest to do like yeah. the cutter are you serious it's so easy yeah it's just the yeah up, you just over go and up. over and up and yeah. that's it and down or whatever and then the pitches i like to throw like a i like to throw in a, a nice splitter or something and it's Dude, just like you gotta tell me about the it. first time i threw a splitter i was like wait where am i supposed to go from here like <laughs> i didn't realize i was supposed to go back up and then down so dude yes it's, it's wild um and then the lack of team affinity so we i guess to clarify we did have the content that team affinity would have housed that's true but we just didn't it was it's how the programs are lined out so it's all yeah that like face of the franchise and now legends of the franchise and now true literally everything else is all yeah. so you don't have that four pieces where like all right i got three months to finish this team of Finney before the next one comes out or whatever the time was on it right um, and you could back in 21 you could still go back and do it it yeah. wasn't like a time situation exactly. like i missed that about uh also 20 you could still do the inning programs like that was first... really cool and I, yeah. it sucks because some of them are like two week programs like what if i don't have right. two weeks to play the game like what if i'm busy um exactly. you're kind of screwing me until the end of the year when i can go back and do all these rewind programs and yeah. events and but if i was someone who would have stayed with the game like i would have been pissed that i didn't have those cards when everybody else did because i just didn't have the opportunity to play absolutely Let's so like you get slammed at work or something exactly like, like we have yeah. lives like i get it they're trying to do things to make people play the game more because the more people that play the game the more money they make essentially um, yeah because if you break down the numbers the more people playing they're buying stubs blah blah, blah. they're working the market All right this, a lot of moving parts on on their side so the more hands they get on joysticks the more dollar bills they see that's true i get it from their perspective but also like if you're if you're gone for a month and you're just like i don't have these cards i don't even want to play the game anymore because like i can't get them right now so it's just like i'm gonna play something else exactly or so i don't know so and then, to, i try to think of it from a couple different angles but i would usually so right around the all-star break it was literally right after the all-star game i stopped playing the game yeah, I feel like um, a lot of people did. Yeah. And it's really just because I get so frustrated with like whatever it is. Like, oh, wow, this is two weeks. Well, I'm not going to be able to play all week. Um, right. Because I still want to spend time with my wife and my kid and, and not absolutely not just sit at my computer. I sit at a computer all day for work. I don't want to come home and have to do that just to enjoy a game that I like to play. So right. I, hope, I hope they bring that back. Um, I do too, man. I, I really do too let us have some different innings to do the rest of the program is even the content was great um i agree i i really like the retro uh retro fine yeah the little stamp cards god i love yeah, those cards. those are great i love that um, card I art really was fantastic this year the finest it really was was really good um 
postseason, the postseason are cards are fantastic. I'm going through that the post 2022 postseason program right now, and it's yeah, the, that card art's really good. It's pretty freaking awesome. And then of course, my man Jeremy Pena, um, is his card's nasty, man. I can't wait his to card's get it. Really good. I think he's gonna be the one that I'll debut, do like a debut video for that. You know, I'm the last person to debut this card because no one's be playing sick. the game anymore. Do you ever, dude, you could probably you got enough postseason cards in there. You could probably run a decent 2022 World Series Houston team. Yeah, I, th- I thought about also doing like a an all Houston team build, just bringing That'd them into solid. ranked, um, or like a Astros moonshot team into going into the moonshot event and seeing that'd be solid. Seeing who can do what. Um, I like that. Now that I have oh, some of the also, cards. Also, let me. This is kind of this kind of bugs me too. You know how last year we had the forever event? You could use any cards. Yeah. Like, what about pitching for the moonshot event? Like the forever event? Like, I'm kind of pissed that I can only use the pitchers that I want to use either, like in ranked seasons and or yeah. like mini seasons or whatever. It would have been nice to see them split it into two events. Like you have like a, I don't know what the name of the pitching mo- like the opposite of moonshot is, but. Um, yeah. have like a maybe silver and below hitters and be cool. diamond pitchers. That'd be interesting. So we that'd can kind of use because I'm getting all these packs. I get all these choice packs, and I don't even look at the pitchers because there's no reason for me to pick them. Right. Because I'm not. I'm playing the event if I'm playing anything online. So really, just getting thing. And I just got the '99 Randy Johnson, the Live Series collection. Hey, there we go. I haven't even used He's them. Still... Yeah, I know, right? Because I, I haven't have no... like. No reason to because i'm playing an event i can't even use them if i wanted to i know it's it's so difficult and you're not gonna you're not gonna pick them in br probably probably not no I, I don't, i'm not playing like a one i'm not playing a whole lot of br i think i've played yeah. maybe four games i could probably count the br games i've played on one hand this year i don't blame you i, I i'm not a fan of br uh personally i do love events I, i'm normally a ranked seasons guy too i like events ranked season is fun until i get to anything past all-star and then i'm just got you i'm never i've got never you. won a game past all-star so I, uh, 23 is my year uh, 23 is your year dude yeah. you got it i only i only year. played one hall of fame game this year and i faced uh nolan ryan and it was miserable yeah <laughs> it, was, it was awful man and that's another thing is i faced so many people this year in rank season that already had randy johnson like super early like as soon as you could get him yeah. And I'm just like, why am I getting all these? And so it just kind of turned me off. Like, I'm going to go play events where you can't use them. I know, um, right? And, like, the, I love events, but they didn't really bring a lot of creativity into the actual events. Like, a lot of it was Moonshot. And a lot of yeah. it you could use, like, the same cards over and over again. I'm like, let's get kind of weird with it. Yeah. I mean, each I- events last, what, like a week or two weeks in some cases. Like, yeah. let's get weird with it. Let's do an all lefty event or something like that. Yeah, like lefties versus righties or righties versus yeah. lefties. Or, yeah. Or lefty lefties versus righty yeah. righties. And then you're starting to use, and that's a way for, like, I don't know a whole lot of hitters, like, real stats. So I don't know who's good versus, like, a lefty lefty matchup if this Same. hitter actually hits better against lefties than righties. So that would be a way for me to, like, oh, wow, this guy's actually really good against lefties. Absolutely. There's, there's some people in the community that just like, oh, use this person. Some person I've never heard of. Like, use this person because he hits really good against lefties. Right? It's, and it's like, wild. Why, and then, why like, do you know this? Yeah, we can use, like, new cards. It gives us opportunity to yep. use new cards. And lefty-lefty, I suck hitting lefty-lefty, and that event might be something I need to, like, practice. Exactly. Which would be cool. And I know I sound like a boomer by saying, like, I've said a lot of negative things about this year, but... I still had fun with it. I still had fun when I did play for the most part. And I'm looking forward to 23. For sure. I really am. So like, this this podcast, the theme of the podcast, anytime we talk MLB, it's pretty much been us shitting on the game. Okay. Um, I'm glad I'm not like I, perfect. I enjoy playing the game. Um, I do take a month off because I just can't play the same thing. Or I don't take a month off. I take months. Right. With an S <laughs> I don't blame off. you, man. I don't because blame you. I, I can't play the same game. It doesn't matter what the game is. Like right now, I'm playing a lot of Warzone. I will get tired of that. I play a lot of Fortnite. I get tired of that. Um, so it's I'm, I don't stop playing the game because I think the game sucks or anything like that. It's just right. I need something that I'm gonna have fun playing because if you're not having fun on stream, then people aren't gonna have fun watching you. 
Absolutely. So, but Absolutely. MLB is a, a great game to engage with your chat a lot more because it's a lot slower so paced. Um, it's like so a perfect good. game to do that in. It really is. I think I streamed Warzone maybe once when I was in a freeze off and it was like, I don't know when to talk to chat. I feel like I'm ignoring them when I'm not talking <laughs> to them, but I also can't talk to them because I'm in a, you know, I'm exactly. going to fight right now. I'm trying, I'm fighting for my life. Exactly. So I had a moment last night when I was streaming Warzone and I looked down and I said something in chat. I read the question and then the game started and I looked back down and I was like, what? that doesn't make any sense. It's because there was an entire conversation that happened above me <laughs> that I just completely missed because I was like locked into Warzone. So it's, it's Dude, hard. Yeah. Chat it, definitely I can suffers. Imagine it's tough. Especially when you have like when you have that medium number of people in your chat where you can actually like have several different conversations it makes things tough i feel like yeah. guys like dr disrespect or nick Merckx, it they're basically streaming to no one and just playing the game because mm -hmm. they might glance over like once or twice during a game and just like yeah the, they're the chat's flying so fast they can't keep up anyway so so i've noticed it as well um and they may be acknowledge one or two people um but the one time i did see nick Merckx, he was doing a workout stream and he's like he had this whole garage set up where he had all his weights and um he was actually engaging and nick Merckx is actually a pretty cool dude um, he seems really cool but yeah they they're it's basically a chat room like an aol chat room that has a video stream going at the same time yep it's like a watch party for a streamer it really is. Um, He'd probably do the same exact thing if he was streaming to no one. If yeah, he had zero, if he wasn't chat, streaming at all, and just had nothing, he would still be talking shit that he talks and saying what he says yeah. and all that stuff. And it he's just be... like, he's just that dude. Yeah. He just has like that, like. And there's he, a few people awesome out there dude. that have it. He's a great streamer. Yeah. And that's why they are where they are, and they exactly make the big bucks. not to take anything away, like or anything, like yeah. They, they have success for a reason. They are good at what they do, and they're very they're entertaining. Amazing people, what they do for sure. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, twenty three? Let's start with the cover. We always we always start here with the cover. I uh, love Derek Jeter. Love Jazz as well. Okay. I I think Jazz is a great option. I really do. And it's wild that I don't know. You probably saw Twitter I with did. the MLB community <laughs> for like a couple of days afterwards, and yeah. people arguing about it. But I think it makes perfect sense you know of course he doesn't have the accolades as like a you know a maybe even juan soto or yeah. a couple other guys that could have done the cover but he is young he's exciting like people know the euro step he's going to bring in a lot of people to the game i feel like yeah. like he, kids love him kids love him kids love video games exactly and, and that's what that's what me and nick talked about nick uh terrio 12 where like he brings baseball's always been known as like a, a boring sport he yeah. brings that excitement in that are going to get younger kids and younger people into the sport exactly then, you know that's just all it's gonna it's he's there's nothing bad about jazz for baseball jazz is nothing but good for baseball absolutely absolutely and like I think I know that the community was kind of clamoring for J Rod for Julio Rodriguez. I can see why. I can but. see why too. I think he makes a perfect choice. But I think, I mean, this is his first year. I think the wheels could have been in motion with Jazz before we really saw Julio start to pop off. Jazz, I, I noticed a lot of people talking about Jazz last year. Well, we were all playing MLB 21 and 22. They, yeah. Everybody's like with Jazz Chisholm and. You know he's a glitch card and all this yeah, stuff. He's like, a great card. He's he's a great dude. He's young. He's exciting, like you said. Um, so I'm excited for Jazz. I am too. Jeter, I, am too. I couldn't give a shit less, man. I could not <laughs> care any less that Jeter's on the cover. And yeah, I don't, I, I don't mean, know. It's not. I'm Astros fan in me. I don't know. What same it is. here. Same here. I'm excited for the game, and I'm I'm excited more so for that. Like I I really respect J Derek Jeter in his game. I know we all kind of go uh, we go crazy talking about his defense and stuff like one of the yeah. most overrated uh defensive players ever, but you know his cards going to be so good. Like oh, yeah. there's so many it options will. for cards we're going to get in 23 for him. Yeah. And I, I like him overall as a player, like Hall of Famer for sure. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. 
100%. Yeah. And, uh, and he's, he's not bad. I just yeah. don't give a shit. Like, I don't I care. Don't, you could have literally right put anybody on it. Yeah, I know, right? I, I'm going to buy the game no matter what. Even, exactly. Actually, I tweeted out like a month ago, if nothing changes, I might not buy the game. But now I'm, I'm on full buy mode. I'm definitely yeah. buying the game. Like, I don't this, know what I was thinking. I think I was just having a bad day or something. This is the one year I'm actually like excited about the game. I'm like, excited too. And pre-order you know start weird? tomorrow at the time of recording this. Which Oh, really? I didn't even know that. Okay. It's actually... I, dude, I need to keep up. This won't post until the 25th, I think this goes up. So okay. pre-orders will be well in full effect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. I will have pre-ordered mine by then, for sure. Yes. I will definitely have mine, I think, next week, probably. That's sometime. what's up. Whenever, whenever I get paid, really. I'm just going to buy it. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a oh, question yeah. for you, and I forgot what I, I was, was going to ask you. I was literally about to say something. Oh, yeah. It could have been uh, anyone on the cover. I'm still going to buy the game. Yeah. But as far as, like, I, I don't know how much the cover... I mean, I think the Derek Jeter cover will make a difference in, like, getting new people to buy the game. Especially people our age when, like, Derek Jeter might be their, like, one of their childhood players. The same way, like, yeah. Chipper Jones was for me as a Braves fan. And I'm sure like Jeff Bagwell and Craig Biggio are to you, exactly. Probably. So I'm excited more so for the game, like and the kind of potential it's going to bring. And I think, I think I might be reading into this a little bit too much, but I don't think they would have put a guy like Derek Jeter on the cover if they didn't have like significant upgrade plans for the game itself. Yeah, and that's the thing. Another thing is Jeter's the first legend. Like they're telling us about, and I get it. He's on the cover, but yeah. I, that that makes me wonder what else are they about to announce? Like maybe Dude. there's some other big news. Like we didn't just lead off with Jeter for no reason. So hopefully right. there's some big news, some big players coming into the game. Dude, um, I yes. joked with um, Nick in his stream today. He's like, I want to see, or someone in his chat was like, I want to see like a steroids pack. Like give me packs of like a Dude, choice pack with yes. everybody who's used steroids. And I'm like, dude, they can take the juicy pack and just turn it into the juice pack. <laughs> dude, yes. I, I love that. I think that would I don't think they'll ever do it, but imagine like ninety nine overall Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa from dude. the uh the home run war that they had. It'd be OP. Dude, I think they would secretly awesome. have like hundred and thirty five power. Yeah. That would, that would be the steroids. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Steroids It'd be like one twenty five plus ten. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. It would be one be of awesome. the quirks. The one of the quirks will be like juiced or like yes. a healthy breakfast, a balanced breakfast. There I you. think a balanced the... breakfast. But That's... low key, like, what do you think of the new legends that they put in like the last couple years? This year, I I liked. We got a lot of new people. Um, Randy we Johnson really um, has pretty much been a fan. I've been a fan of Randy Johnson ever since he hit a bird with a fastball. Do the yeah, <laughs> dude. Um, imagine what Twitter would be like. If he would have hit that bird today. Yeah. It would. God, I can only imagine. It would be but so fun. It would be uh, so fun. I always thought they should have done that for his card art. Was just have like a that, like a, like a tops now, like a flashback tops now of him hitting a bird. That'd be great. Like, like Velo 125. Yeah. It's quirks give him like. Would a, be explosiveness. Exactly. Give him some quirks that go with it. Like they, they yeah. could have done some stuff with it. But. Like his. Um. Did Basketball we get really flies? Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> Did we I get Roberto Clemente? Um, Clemente this was year? in twenty one. Okay, and he was That 21. was a great ad. That was an absolutely great ad. I loved his card. Um, we got some good cards. legends though. Who else did we, we get got, this year? Uh, Hank Aaron. We got in twenty one. Hank Aaron. That was a great yeah. ad to the game. We got a better Pedro Martinez. I actually have my uh my game pulled up right here. Like I can take a quick look. Uh, we got Chase Utley. That's oh, a yeah. big one. Uh, Ryan Howard. That's a good there one, go. too. Ryan oh, Howard. Man, is love a big me some one Ryan Howard. Who else? Who else? There was one I was looking at him yesterday. I don't remember. I don't remember who he was. Uh, Joe Mauer. Joe Mauer. Oh, yeah. We got there you him. Go. Joe Mauer, for sure. He hasn't, Joe been, Maurer. he hasn't been in the game since he was on the cover of it. So, Dude, I know. Um, Jim Edmonds, I don't, I don't know if he's new. No, we've had Edmonds but, for a uh, while. Yeah, you're right. Um, let's I'm a little see. upset that we will we'll have a year of MLB The Show without Albert Pujols in it. That's true. 
That's true. I really loved that milestone they gave us. His 700 home run yeah. card. And that, like, the that judge card, one, the card art was fantastic on those. So good. So good. And talk about like some talented people on Twitter making their like card arts. Yeah. Like there's some talent out there. there My goodness. I've always said, well, I don't want to say always, since basically I started doing this, I've been saying that they have, we have all these creators um, creating like mock covers like what they think the cover of the game should be and i think for the digital version of the game everybody sends mlb the show their digital cover of the game x player like hey we're putting jazz on the cover send us your jazz covers and then they pick their ones they like and then we as a community vote on the cover of the game i think that's a great idea because some some people out there have like made some amazing covers like yeah covers they look so good like, and i'm sure logistically never... like they would have like sds would have to pay the artist at some point oh for sure um so i think that's probably why they won't do that but i think that would be pretty cool just to do like a a fan edition of the game i think um, that'd be great that'd be fantastic so that would be cool. i would love that <clears throat> um other covers that I would have liked to see, I would I wouldn't mind Albert Pujols on the cover of Twenty Three, the Collector's Edition. That would have been sweet. Um, he had an amazing career. He better I bet we be, see he, that. He better grace the cover. Yeah. Um, a lot of people said Julio. Um, if it was between Julio, if they were looking at rookies like that, Jeremy Pena would be the choice. It wouldn't be Julio Rodriguez. They got. Uh, they got I don't sweet. know. <laughs> I mean. In, if we look Jeremy at it, Pena is going to be good. Jeremy Pena in his rookie year was the first rookie shortstop to hit a home run in the World Series. He was That's ALCS, true. ALCS MVP and World Series MVP. You in do his have first a point year there, in the league. sir. You do have a point there, and sir. And he hit a home run. His first home run was hit while his parents were being interviewed in the stands. That's like you cannot actually, I forgot write a better that was story. Him. I forgot that was him. What if they like put his parents in the background on the yes, cover? Yes, give his parents a Topps Now card. The, dude, like, yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be sick. Jeremy Payne's you know, dad, and it's just we gotta get a, we gotta get the DH this year, right? I haven't heard anything. I'm hoping it comes Universal DH. I don't like the fact. I don't like the idea of a Universal DH because it gives no one a reason to pull their pitcher. I agree. I agree um, with that. I like. I so do I don't want another works. hitter in the lineup because there's just like. So many cards that I don't want to use just because they suck in the field, just like Nelson Cruz or something yeah. like that. But at the same time, like, yeah, uh, it does take some strategy to put your bench lit together. And I don't necessarily, I'm sure we're going to see some players that just use that bench as platoon options. Yeah. And just like that when, when they um, see a lefty come out on the mound, just like, sub out a bunch of righties for their lefties in the lineup yeah and vice versa so that's what i kind of am nervous about if they do put a dh but also like i i don't mind having another bat in there yeah i mean i it's, think it's they could do it sword. if they made it to where pitchers if you reached no energy you didn't have a choice you had to pull them if they that did something like that then maybe it would work and then they would have I, to change the whole stamina mechanics in the game and how it they, works. Do they need to change that anyway? That, I mean, that needs to be changed yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Anyways. I forgot about that until just now. Because in event, like, so I like how they have it in BR where it's a three inning game, and your pitcher loses majority of the stamina in the first inning. Like they compensate for yeah. it because it's only a three inning game. They don't do that in events. So in events, do you they have to, not? No, not at least not I in this event that. that's current. So okay, people put in these sidearms. Who? What's his name? Justin Lawrence. Yes, sidearm sidearm pitcher, and I cannot hit him to save my life. He's tough, man. He's and really tough. And they'll just leave him in. They'll start him, and they'll just leave him in. It's and crazy, it's man. Very frustrating. So it sucks. And like some guys like that, no matter how many pitches you see, like it doesn't seem to get any easier. Yeah. To like pick up the ball, track it. Exactly. It, there's just some guys like that. I think. uh one of them for me a couple years ago was Bob Feller. I could not see him and like for some reason Shohei Otani. I can't read him. I can't, I can't read the ball Shohei out of his hand. To save my life. And he's like known around the community as like someone just you take yard all the time, like terrible pitcher. I'm just like, I can't I can't do it. I don't it. know how you do I it. can't hit him. Yeah, I don't know how never been me. able to hit Nolan. Um Randy Johnson. Nolan. I haven't really faced him a whole lot, but I haven't played a lot online. 
I think I'd rather face Randy Johnson than Nolan Ryan if I'm being honest. The one thing Unless about I'm Nolan like doesn't have any in. control. Like his control That's is true. terrible. So That's you have true. a chance of just getting walked. That's very true. His fastball is just like it feels like one ten. Yeah. It's just I've never it's swung more late at a pitch in my entire life. Dude, yeah, that and then the occasional like circle change where you'll not realize it's a circle change and then by the time it hits the mitt you just press <laughs> yeah. text and you're just like if you're streaming sorry bud the, your chat's gonna make fun of you yeah um someone he's actually new in my chat immediately picked up on the fact that i swing at everything and oh, he right. said you need an i swing at everything emote <laughs> and i was like how would i do that because i really want one now so I want to try to make like an animated emote of me swinging at an outside slider that's just way outside and like he's doing the whole reaching for it um, and lunged over. If I can yes. get like a clip of that and make it an animated emote, I'm here for it. So That'd be sick, man. I'm going to try to mess around with it and see if I can't. I'm sure I can. It's got to be easy Dude, footage to get. It happens all the time gotta to You got to do me. it. I think it'll be sick. You'll, you'll make a good one. So that'll be fun. Um, anything else in 23 you're excited for? You're looking, hopefully, looking forward to? I'm hopefully looking towards like a new sort of mode, like maybe a weekend league sort of situation, or maybe like change up ranked seasons or make like another pathway to it. I really miss ranked seasons, um, uh, how, how it was in 20, where the, the, it wasn't the innings program. It wasn't a program. You either get to 900 or you don't, and that's yeah. how you get the card. We, like, yep. I, I miss that. I do think it's great that the program, like you can play the game more and still get the card. I think that's great. But maybe make it not sellable or something. Yeah. If that makes so... any sort of sense. And also, I'm not like a I'm not a guru about the market or anything like that. But I just miss that, and I think people don't quit out nearly as often because like you have to win if you're trying to get that card yeah and then like you got to do away with the programs i i agree we talked about it i need a counter on each one of these podcasts on how many times people complain about the same thing because really <laughs> just like look we're everybody's saying the same thing yeah um, everyone's saying the same thing i i kind of like the br program just because i hate playing br so br is yeah picking, i can't pick and choose though like it's it's got to be all or none br and i agree go. but rank seasons like if i if i were someone good enough to go flawless and i got a card and then someone else is not good enough but they have more time on their hands then they they just got the exact same card i did yeah, you know, it and drives just like I don't it know. It killed the market. It, it destroyed the the price of those cards. The price of any card this yeah. year, for some reason, is really low. Like Mike Trout is ten thousand subs. Dude, yeah, it's so bad. And, and Max like, Scherzer is weirdly like forty thousand, which is that's odd. that's interesting. That's so weird. I, I don't. It's so weird not to have Trout be the most ex or the highest overall live series card. Yeah. Aaron That's Judge so is a live series 98 right now. That's crazy. It's I don't think insane. we've seen a 99 live series since like way back before I even yeah. played Diamond Dynasty. Exactly. I have him paralleled, so he's 99 for me. But hey, there you go. He's not as good as the 62 home run milestone, but absolutely. And also, like, let me tell you, the the World Series rewards were terrible. Like, okay. they need to be so much better. They need to be. I don't know. Like, it, there was no reason for me to really want to play world series or rank season just because the incentive to those cards the the cards were not very good in my opinion they were like comparable to just a program card around the same time period i'm thinking rank seasons rewards should be the best cards like a month from now even yeah you know in my opinion they or should maybe, be ahead of know, their time now yeah exact yes that's what i'm trying to say yes. exactly so what did you think of the... We always have like the three or four big collections. Seems like it's always Mantle. Um, but we this year we had Rollins, we had McCutcheon, and we had George Brett. What did you think of those collections? Yes. I, I really liked those cards. Okay, I, I haven't really used them yet. I really like those cards I'm a lot. Close to McCutcheon and Brett, but I'm not anywhere near Rollins or definitely not Mantle. Brett is... Brett's swing is really good. All I think all those cards have a really good swing. I know a lot of people don't like Mickey Mantle's swing, but I just he's good for me. I love but I've also, always I liked his swing. Yeah, I thought it's been good, and I thought 
you know, I mean, that was the best card attribute wise we've ever seen in Diamond Dynasty. And yeah. but I also don't have a small sample size because it, it's so it's so interesting because the collection rewards get better as the year goes on. And then it sucks because once you get to that point, like how much more are we all going to play it? So it's exactly. like it's so it's a double edged sword. Like, I don't know how to balance it as far as content goes and like how you release it and in what order. Yeah. Cause like, it seems like you release Griffey too early or something and it's, he's not going to be as good or something. And then, but if you release him too late, then like, Oh, I'm not even going to play anymore. So what's the point? We didn't get him sooner. I mean, they, they kind of did that. They gave us the 99 Griffey player program. And then they gave us the Takashi Griffey. That's true. Which is a um, thousand times better. It was so much better. I'm talking like Griffey was just kind of the name I threw out there, but like in another player's case, maybe like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, maybe Vlad or something. I don't know. Yeah. Something Who, like that. Any, but any guesses know. on the, the big collections that we, we might get in 23. Uh, do we think it's going to be Jeter? I think we, or I think, he... I think Jeter's going to be the live series collection. That's, possibly what i'm thinking too um, Either that or do they hide him behind that sort of paywall though i don't know because i don't know i know like they want ev they probably want everyone to play with jeter yeah, i mean he'll get like low like maybe an 85 86 yeah. diamond i'm sure yeah and then i think you're right i think he'll get a legends of the franchise if they do something like that again um he'll definitely yeah. have a maybe a couple he'll have a finest like a flashback finest card yeah, that'll be sweet. Um, or maybe even like a 3,000 hit uh, milestone. A milestone card. He'll yeah. Jeter's going to end the year with like 10 different cards. I think you're probably right. <laughs> so um, we're, I think you'll have ample opportunity to use him. And then there's going to be some standout ones. Maybe a BR reward or something that is just a, a crazy like juiced, like way beyond yes. overrated version of Jeter. Yes, I agree. I think you're right about that. And like every to everyone listening, take everything I've said today with like a grain of salt, yes. just because like I'm not, I'm not nearly as smart as some of these other guys out there, other some of these other guys and girls out there. Like some of these, some of these creators just know and are on top of things. And I'm just like I'm not that dude. I can speculate. Yeah, that's what we do. We but, we are opinionated, and we'll yeah. just tell you what we think, and then maybe we're right, and maybe we're not likely we're yeah not. absolutely i'm like wrong so much it's i'm hilarious. wrong definitely more than i'm right so yeah we'll see we'll see how that uh how that goes for sure but um yeah, yeah no i'm excited for mlb 23 mlb has grown on me a lot I, it's more of a madden player before i started streaming really um, i did not know that i wasn't very good at it either but i started <laughs> that's all right the whole ultimate team Gameplay was all from Madden. Like, I, I played okay. Madden, and then me and my buddy, we would just Cowboys versus Texans um, all the time. I and then I was like, hey, That's what is up. this mutt? You ever played this? He goes, no, it sounds stupid, whatever. I'm not going to play it. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to try it out. And I'm like, dude, this is cool. You, like, collect cards, and then you, like, play with it. He's like, oh, it sounds like Pokemon. And I'm like, dude, just dude, try it. It's so addicting. And he tried it one it time is... and got hooked. We bought PlayStations just to play MLB The Show. Just dude, to play I was Diamond the same Dynasty. way. I've uh, I've played MLB the show since 06. I was oh, like, wow. Yeah, I'm like an OG OG. So like franchise was my thing. Like I remember I made my whole high school team on the rosters and went okay. through a franchise with that. And like I would do that with my friends in the neighborhood. And it was just like so fun. That's cool. And that was on PS2. I didn't get a PS3. I went to Xbox. So we didn't have MLB the show. I did the same then, exact thing. Yep. Okay. And so you know, so you know how it is. Exactly. You know how it is. And then uh I stuck with Xbox. Um I had an Xbox One. I still have an Xbox One. But when I got my first big boy paycheck after nursing school, I was like, dude, I'm buying a PS4 and I'm getting MOB the show so I can play franchise again. And that's that's that. Okay. Anyway, uh, went way off topic there. Sorry. About yes. That. No. So it's funny because that's almost exactly minus. I didn't just buy a PS4. I traded in my Xbox for a PS4, 
Got you. For the sole oh, yeah. purpose of playing MLB The Show. That was mid-year 17, the one that Griffey was on the cover of. Okay. I did okay. play, I... I think it was 04, the MLB The Show that had uh, Big Poppy on the cover. Yeah, I think that was either 06. I think that was 06. It might have been 06. That was the first time I ever played MLB The Show on the PlayStation 2. Here, I can yes. look it up. MLB the... Dude, it was so good. And like... Pool holes the was on depth the of... Yeah, you're right. 06. Was... Okay. Pool holes was on 04. And I really... Okay. When it came to MLB The Show, Diamond Dynasty wasn't a thing back then. So right. it was, like you said, franchise mode. I think they had Road to the Show or some sort they of did. career mode. Yeah, career mode. And then yeah. that was really it. Maybe Home Run Derby. So we would just mess around with those game modes and have fun locally. And then, Same. yeah, well, I got into Madden Ultimate Team, like super deep into it. And I was like, man, I really want to play a baseball. I haven't played a baseball game in a while. And I completely forgot MLB The Show was the thing. And I was like, wait, what oh, is this? Yeah. They, they call it Diamond Dynasty and... I was like, it sounds kind of cool. And he's like, man, baseball would be kind of hard. And then we're like, fuck it, let's just jump in. So we literally got off the Xbox party, got in our cars, went and traded it, and got the game. No came shit. back home and played it. Like, it was, Dude, that's hilarious. It was that's pretty amazing. cool. Um, he'll that's eventually that's a great be on here as well. But that's yeah, cool. It's super, super cool. And I haven't looked back since. I'm a PlayStation guy. Um, I do. I wouldn't mind having an Xbox now that the game is on Xbox, and if, apparently, if you get an Xbox, you get to play it for free. So, that's true. That's um, true. I I still have the Xbox One. I downloaded it actually, and it's just like it runs really weird, and it's like so choppy on yeah. uh, Xbox One. So I don't know if it needs to be next gen to like really play well or something, or is it? I might be something with my settings. So I don't know. It, it's probably on my end. I mean the the further out that we get from having the next gen consoles like the worst gameplay is going to be on the older ones until they eventually just do away right. with it so i think you're right i would assume everybody's saying this is the yet last year it's going to be on the the old gen systems i don't know if that's true or not i hope it's true um i think I really they need to take the true. game off the of switch um i wouldn't I mind that either i don't think it needed to be on switch i don't know if you played it on the switch it's terrible i did not but I, <laughs> i've um, heard stories i man. played the tech test on the the switch and it was absolutely horrendous i'll probably play the tech test again on the switch again just to see if they made any changes did you do it handheld or did you do it via i TV? did it handheld um i didn't really give it the opportunity to be on the tv and i've been beat by you. people who play on the switch so maybe there's something to it some people are built different man i, I, I just don't i don't get it i don't have it i can I'm, tell you when this guy beat me on the switch i looked up his name to make sure he wasn't like a streamer or like a youtuber or something yeah. it's like this this guy's gotta be like ten thousand subscribers on youtube if he's beating me like this <laughs> and right? no he was I couldn't find his name anywhere all right cool man well my two questions um that yes. i always ask everybody before we uh before we end it is my first question is what advice would you give to a smaller streamer or maybe a newer streamer the one piece of advice that you would give them i would say don't wait just just go ahead and start like don't think too hard just try whatever this is like not, not your career yet or anything if you want it to be your career um so you're not held to any sort of expectation right now so just do what you want and just have fun with it have fun with it and just if you're waiting to 23 to start you're doing yourself a huge disservice just start now get some reps in it is a skill and it's a skill that you want to practice in my opinion yep like and also i'll say one more thing when you're first starting out uh re-watch your vods re-watch your videos and see what you can improve as far as like audio or anything like that and practice talking to a room with no one in it like there's a thousand people in it that's what i would say it's weird clue put it the almost the exact same way really? is always act like you're streaming to a thousand people yep um which is a very interesting that both y'all use that analogy example really that's interesting yeah. I, i've used that for like ever since i started it's, it's good advice, though. I mean, definitely. And that's kind of what I did. I just jumped right in. I had no idea what I was getting into. Same um, here, man. But I had watched enough streamers, and I used to watch, like, Kevin G.O.D. a lot. Um, and yeah. So I knew, like, I want to. that's what I want to 
mirror as much as I can. Yeah. Um, without stealing ideas from other people and stuff like that. I right. Like, I want to be the guy who just comes in. I'm chill. You can come hang out. We'll talk baseball. We'll talk shit to each other or whatever. Yeah. Um, and we'll just have a good time. Yeah. Talk about it. Talk about anything. Exactly. Yeah. Um, my second question is a, a pretty easy one. What can I promote for you? What What are you currently working on? What do you currently want to get out to the internet? Currently working on uh, just franchise videos on YouTube. Just like okay. rebuilds. I'm working on a Milwaukee Brewers series right now. It's It's pretty fun. Like I think I'm getting better at it. And it's just, it's a fun time. I, I dig franchise, even though it's not in a great state for 22. I still think there's value to be had with it. And I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I hope that like it shows in the product that I'm having fun. Um, but yeah, you can check me out on there. Everything is the show noob. Awesome. Yeah, I think I got them right here up on the screen on the overlays. Um, so they should be able to find you. The links will also be down in the description below. Um, with everything cool. as well. Um, Dude, I appreciate you, man. For Thanks sure, for man. having me on. This man. is this, this is was a great fun. time. Yeah, this, this was, was fun. fun. Everybody watching, if you enjoyed the podcast, let us know. Um, if you got any questions, let us know. Hello, peace.